In today's session, I'm going to teach market structure. What are the various forms of the market structure? How, uh, what, what, what would be the shape in the long run and short run? How mathematically it would estimate about the revenues which comes under the various forms of structures. So let's begin one by one. There are two, four types of markets. The first one is perfect competition, monopoly, oligopoly and monopolistic competition. So let's begin uh, the main difference between these four. So when we talk about the firms, perfect competition, having a large number of firms, monopolistic also uh, follow the same uh, procedure, large number of firms, oligopoly, a very small number of firms would exist in such form. Monopolistic, only the one firm who have a whole control on the market. When we talk about the products, then what type of products under these forms of market, the under perfect competition, identical products, that means the same uh, category of the products will be sold. Monopolistic, a differentiated or identical in certain conditions uh, or in certain situations, it, could, it will be sold. Oligopoly is similar or differentiated products will be sold and monopoly no close substitutes of products would be available. When we talk about the entry and exist, uh, so perfect competition, there is no barriers. In monopolistic, always be a, a firm could, uh, in, could uh, take an entry and exit the firm. Oligopoly, some barriers to entry would be is possible in the, this form and effective barriers to entry. It is very difficult to get an entry in the monopoly as there is only one firm and no new firms would enter in such markets. And of course, uh, in oligopoly also, new firms would be would, would get difficult to get an entry into such form. But when we talk about the perfect and monopolistic free entry and exist. So there is no restrictions or barriers to put into an entry or exist. When we talk about the control over the market price, so perfect competition has no control. Why? Because the industry has a control and the accordingly firm has to accept that price to sell the goods. But when we talk about monopolistic, a small control of the firms over the price, because they charge different prices uh, on, from different consumers so automatically. They have a small control of the prices of various products or differentiated products. So when we talk about oligopoly, there is substantial control. That means, okay, uh, there is no entry, so it would be similar or differentiated to have a, some, some, some type of control or some sort of control over the price. But when we talk about monopoly, there is a significant control about the price. So automatically monopoly is having one firm, so they have full control over the price and control over the market. So that's the main reason, a significant control over the price or over the market price of the products. So these are the main difference, the four main uh, uh, bases and the difference among the four forms which you can portray or write in detail. The next one is perfect competition. What is perfect competition? Uh, we're having a large number of buyers, a uh, free entry and exit, uh, no control. So this is the exact uh, definition that perfect competition is that form of market which have a large number of firms uh, you can who so sells the identical products at uh, you can see the at the particular fixed price which has been uh, decided by the industry and under this competition the firm ha has to except that particular price where the where they can so they where they can sell the goods to ultimate consumers so they have a following categories that there are many buyers and sellers goods offered to various sellers at at a large scale even the firms can fairly entry and exit no control over the price 
So this is all about the perfectly competitive market. So what is the competitive market? Just due to such characteristics, the following outcomes of such market would arise. So these are the two outcomes. The action of any single end buyer or seller in the market have a negligible impact on the market price. As they, they have no control over the market price, so there is no impact on the market price based under such form whether at buy at the single buyer or a seller but when we talk about the second outcome each buyer and seller takes the market price as given so there is should be no changes whatever the market price has been fixed by the industry the firm and the buyer and seller has to accept that price whether it would be high or low or higher or lower they have to accept whatever the price has been given and that is the role of the perfectly competitive market. In a competitive market, what was the what was the condition that how to estimate the total revenue, whatever the revenue uh, received by the sellers while buying the goods and services or any quantity sold at a given price. So that is the price into quantity. So total revenue is always be proportional to the amount of output. As the output goes increases or rises, the total revenue would also get increased. And that's the main reason that the total revenue is proportional to the amount of that output which is being sold to the customers. Now we talk about under perfectly competitive market, if the total revenue is equal to price into quantity, then average revenue is equal to price. So under, under such market, whatever the price is being designed or is being fixed by the industry, that the same price is to be considered under such market and which also equals to the average revenue. What is average revenue? Average revenue is refers to a total revenue by per unit of quantity sold. Or in other words, when the total revenue we calculated the price into quantity by quantity, and ultimately once you apply the mathematical formula, then ultimately what was the rule the uh, come out that is average revenue is equal to price. The next concept is marginal revenue that it refers to a change in total revenue while putting up an additional unit sold and that's called the marginal revenue and that's the formula states for that marginal revenue is equal to delta total revenue by delta Q. So whatever the changes would occur into a uh, into an output into a unit sold whether it would be more or would be less any so automatically it all, always influences the changes in total revenue and when it, this happens it calls the marginal revenue so marginal revenue is equal to delta tr by delta q so this is the uh, tabulation which has been shown over here that is the revenue of a competitive firm that is quantity has been given of one to eight one loan to eight loan the prices is a is a means fixed that is a uh, twenty dollar or twenty rupees then we talk about the total revenue how to calculate the total revenue that is quantity into price so one by one the uh, total one by one the total revenue has been estimated from one to eight quantity that is one by twenty two by twenty five by twenty eight by twenty and so on and that's the estimation of total revenue that is twenty forty Sixty, eighty, hundred, one, twenty, forty, one, sixty. So once you calculate the total revenue, that the next concept is average revenue. And what was how to what was the formula and how to calculate the average revenue? That is total revenue by Q. So how uh, total revenue is being estimated already? So just divide the number of units sold. 
So once you divide the units sold, you will get the average revenue, which automatically equals to price. So you can see in the in the tabulation, the tabular representation, that average revenue is equal to price. When we talk about the marginal revenue, marginal revenue is equal to delta total revenue by delta Q. So if you look at the uh, you can see marginal revenue but with total revenue is 40 minus 20 by 1. So you will get the values of the uh, marginal revenue. If we look it into 1, then what was the difference 40 minus 20 by delta quantity that is 1. So the Q is delta Q is 1. And total revenue is 20. Then again, 20 by 1, 20 by 1, 20 by 1, 20 by 1, and so on. So once you get uh, uh, the values of the marginal revenue, so you can you can see that marginal revenue and average revenue is equal to each other. And of course, or in other words, I could say the average revenue is equal to price and marginal revenue is also equal to price. So in, in, in other words, I could say if the quantity increases initially or uh, you can see in all the uh, stages, then price would remain the fixed and ultimately the total revenue is increases at an increasing rate in average revenue and marginal revenue would become fixed at these 20 units. So as a as a result, then ultimately uh, per units, not units, it's per units, 20 per unit, when the average price and marginal price would become equal to price. So ultimately to conclude that average revenue and uh, and marginal revenue equals to price and total revenue will increase at an increasing rate and ultimately here my average and marginal revenue would become fixed at rupees 20 units. Now we talk about the profit maximization under such market, perfect competitive market. In fact, the goal of such competitive firm is to maximize profit. It means that the, the firm is always having an uh, opportunity to produce as much as quantity uh, to the ultimate consumers or to the suppliers or to the sellers that maximize the revenue and automatically also shows the maximum total revenue and total cost. So when we talk about the profit maximization condition, that is the total revenues, total uh, cost, and automatically the another condition which also come up under under this particular market, that is the marginal revenue is also called the marginal cost. So marginal revenue it refers to a change in total revenue. Uh, you can say earned from uh, earned from the additional unit of the output sold. So same here also that marginal revenue is also getting as also refers to the total revenue or a change in total revenue from the, from the additional units of an output. And marginal cost is refers to a changes in total cost for or by adding any uh, by adding additional units of output and that's called the marginal cost. So whatever the difference between uh, these two, when it when it equals to each other, and when the total revenue is also equal to total cost, and that particular portrays a profit maximization conditions uh, under perfectly competitive market. And in fact, as firm as firm as firm will uh, produce the more and more quantity will ultimately increases the revenue and when it increases the revenue then automatically the total revenue is more than the total cost and that ultimately the condition of profit maximization and, uh, and it is always shows the difference of total revenue should more than the total cost because the ultimately goal is to maximize the total revenue uh 
of the firm and if the if we maximize the more and more difference between these two it's called profit maximization so how uh, this is called a profit maximization you will have a quantity you will have a total revenue total cost how to estimate uh, you can say uh, to profit maximization or the profit or revenues or ex you can see the actual profit and actual revenue or in other words so but this is a formula to estimate the uh, profit actual profit that is total revenue minus total cost marginal revenue is becomes the same and the marginal cost would get a change so uh, in the particular question of profit maximization situation quantity is given total revenue is given and total cost would be given how to estimate the profit marginal revenue and marginal cost so uh, when we talk about the profit the, 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 it refers to a difference between the total revenue and total cost so total revenue is given total cost is given you just need to have a uh, get a difference between these two terms one by one from long zero to eight and you will get the profit so if we look out the profit it would be zero minus ten minus ten twenty minus fourteen six forty minus twenty two eighteen sixty minus thirty four twenty six eighty minus fifty thirty hundred minus seventy thirty one twenty minus ninety four twenty six 140 minus 22 18 160 minus 154 6 so this is the profit has been earned if you look out the profit the curve of the profit it initially begins from the negative value and it increases initially at an increasing rate and then at it reaches to a peak or maximum point and then again increases and declines at a decreasing rate and that's called the shape of the profit maximization condition which having or incorporate a difference between the total revenue and total cost it means under the profit uh, condition the total revenues is more than the total cost and that turns into a profit Marginal revenue is always being seen that is 20 and the marginal cost. So the marginal cost is related to the total cost. So how the same formula, the same conceptual framework will be used in the marginal cost. That is marginal cost is equal to delta total cost by delta Q and then the delta TC is already given to you. That is a difference you need to find out. That means 14 minus 10. The first uh, zero loan will become, uh, you can say, blank. There is no, it's not applicable on such role. So when we talk about the one loan, so that means the 14 minus total cost is 14 minus 10. It becomes 4. And what was the difference of quantity is 2 minus 1. That is 1. So 4 by 1, the answer of marginal cost is 4. 22, uh, 22 minus 14, it becomes 8 and means to, uh, uh, you can see minus the quantity you get having, uh, having a difference of the quantity, you will get 1, that means 8 by 1, you will get the 8. Then accordingly, 34 minus 22, that means 12 by 1, 12. Then 50 minus 34, 16 by 1, that is 16, so and so on. So this is a way to calculate the marginal cost. So the <coughs> so the most important concepts under the profit maximization condition that is the total cost, profit, and marginal cost. So when we talk about marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. When we talk about total cost is equal to total revenue. But under profit maximization condition, it doesn't necessary that the total revenue should be equal to the total uh, cost or the marginal revenue should be equal to the marginal cost. It doesn't necessarily because 
in this particular uh, situation the revenues are more than the cost so as a result the differences automatically exist in the marginal cost in the marginal revenue in the total revenue as well so if you look at the shape of the profit which i have already told it's just uh, begins from the negative then increases at an increasing rate and reach to the maximum point then again start falling at a decreasing rate but when we talk about marginal revenue under the profit maximum marginal revenue profit maximization condition marginal revenue will remain constant that means it remains into a vertical shape that means it remains that there is no change in the marginal revenue curve but when we talk about the marginal cost curve it initially uh begins from the at a decreasing rate then uh increases at an increasing rate and reach to a maximum point and then start uh, you can say falling and then again increases at an increasing rate so that's called the marginal costing where it increases initially then state declines automatically once state decline then it instantly increases at an increasing rate that means it's called the uh, you can say inverse u shape and that's called the marginal cost so this is the profit maximization situation where all these uh, uh, parameters whether it would be total revenue total cost profit marginal revenue marginal cost would comes under in one uh you can see roof so this is a diagrammatical or a theoretical framework of profit maximization as i have told you that the marginal revenue uh would becomes vertical which has been shown in the diagram where the price is equal to a ar that is average revenue is equal to marginal revenue so when we talk about uh, the uh, average total cost which is in worse u shape which has been shown over here and it immediately cuts the uh, price line and ultimately the average variable cost which also shown which uh, in a uh, below the average cost that is average variable cost why there is a difference between the average and average variable cost it is just by a rule of law of diminishing marginal returns which states that the both the cars will initially uh, you can say uh, declining at a uh, you can say initial declining at a possible rate initially then starts reaches to a minimum point and just frequently increases at an increasing rate same for the average cost average variable cost it the declining at a uh, initially then reaches or increases frequently at an increasing rate but that there should be a difference between the two just because of the law of diminishing returns which has been shown here in the diagram initially the shapes of both the curves are are declining in a very different manner so once uh, the average total cost curve touches or cuts the price line from there the marginal cost line will be drawn which cuts the minimum point of the average total cost curve or total cost average cost it means as the output increases the average total cost or average cost will also start increasing if the output goes declining the average cost will also declining which you can see in the initial stages of both the cost average costs that average total cost or average variable cost and as a result it declining initially it increases a very increasing rate but average variable cost it increases at an increasing rate but due to a difference between the two 
uh, it uh, uh, due to the law of diminishing marginal returns, which automatically states that that when the particular uh, you can say cost will start increases decreases initially it becomes reaches to an optimum level and then it declines that it increases not declines it increases at an increasing rate and that due to such different states a law of diminishing marginal returns just because of declining initially but when we talk about the marginal cost which touches the price line which, which states that the firm maximize the profit by producing the all those quantities where the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue and this is a point where the profit maximization which is another condition has been fulfilled that is the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue if you look at the shape of the marginal cost that it cuts the minimum point of both the average cost that is average total cost and average variable cost and once this is the shape of the marginal cost that it cuts the minimum point and where the price line and uh, the marginal cost cut intersect that is called the profit maximization point where the <coughs> marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue so if we look at the uh, you can see the q maximum this is a point where the quantity has reached to an optimum at the maximum level where the quantities has been sold and above the maximum level the quantity has quantity sold has been <coughs> increased and below the optimum level the quantity has been decreased Automatically, if the quantity has been decreased, the cost has also been decreased, that is marginal cost. If the quantity has increased from optimum level, that is the maximum level of output, the marginal cost will also become increased. Uh, so that's, uh, that's called the profit maximization uh, uh, conceptual framework with the help of the graphical representation. And these are the shapes of the average cost and the marginal cost. So accordingly, you can, it will show and prove that the price is equal to marginal cost. That shows that that uh, it reaches to an optimum level, where as the output rises, the profit or the firm could also easily maximize the revenues, and where the marginal revenue is also equal to the marginal cost and of course this is the exact graphical representation in case of profit maximization case now profit maximization case if the marginal revenue is a further explanation of this diagram when the marginal revenue is more than the marginal cost is just due to an increase in output when marginal revenue is less than the marginal cost just due to a decrease in output when both are equal it means the profit is maximized when the tr is also equal then also we called uh, the profit is also maximized so these are the explanation and the main points of the diagram and accordingly you can easily elaborate with the help of the diagram so these are the main key points to elaborate and give an exact explanation what the uh, what the examiner want to see uh, the explanation relevant to a graphical representation of the profit maximization case to shut down or to exist exist so this is the uh, uh, you can say scenario that if a particular firm has to shut down, so he has to take or she has to take a short term decision not to produce anything. That means for a, for a while that if you want to shut down the firm, there's no use to produce anything. So ultimately you just shut down uh, later on in uh, about uh, to produce the goods and services permanently exist. It means it's a long term decision to exist the market. It's, it, it is one of the uh, decisions where the firm has to 
exit by selling off all those fixed assets where if the firm has turned into a losses and that the permanent exist case is a would be a long term decision for such firms most firms always avoid the fixed cost in the short run why because if there is any change in the output fixed cost remains the same and the firm can not avoid such cost in the short run it has to include and that's the main reason there is a situation where the profits or uh, the cost would not get increased as the fix the cost would remain fixed in the short run and as a result it turns into a loss and comes to a situation of shutdown and permanent exist so that's the main reason that most most of the firms cannot avoid the fixed cost in the short run so the firm decisions to short to shut down other uh, if the firm has to take a decision to shut down so there is a condition it means the total revenue is less than the total variable cost when price is less than the average variable cost the firm decision to exist permanently so there is also a two main condition if these two condition exist in the to a firm that means the firm can take a decision to shut down or permanently exist the total revenue is more than the total cost price is more than the average total cost so there is a difference whether you want to shut down that means the average a uh, variable cost would come up so when you have to uh, exist permanently then the total cost that means total cost then average total cost would exist in case of existence and in, in case of shutdown if this is an exist Uh, exit. Then price is more than the average total cost is the entry. Then definitely, if the price is less than the average total cost, if or the price if the price is more than, then this is an entry of the firms to come or to enter into the perfectly competitive market. So there is a two situation: shut down or exit permanently. And this condition has to be follow up. If if any firm wants to enter. The price should be more than the average total cost, so that the firm can easily enter in perfectly competitive market. So this is the curve. This is a curve of a competitive firm short term supply curve. So this is the mean. Uh, this change to be like one by one the curve portrays the situation and why the price is more than ABC, why the price is less than. ABC by when the firm could get shut down, uh, so it can be shown in the following diagram. It is shown in the condition, but now it's uh, shown through the graphical representation. You need to draw the average total cost curve, an average variable cost, and the marginal cost. Now, within the uh, diagrammatical representation, it has been shown a uh, one by one the exact condition. So marginal cost is also called a firm short run supply curve because it's we are talking about the short run. So automatic supply curve or uh, or um, in the short run, which is called the marginal cost. That is short run marginal cost. So when this particular marginal cost line, what exactly say is? It says that the price, if the price is more than average total cost. the firm will continue to produce at a profit if you look out the line that uh, the price line can be drawn so automatically this condition will be fulfilled when the price is equal to marginal revenue and average revenue but when we talk about uh, the uh, you can see the optimum level that is the below the average total cost if the price is more than the average variable cost the firm will continue to produce in the short run so automatically if the price is more than abc then the firm will continue to produce uh, in the short run if the price is less than the abc then the firm might will take a decision to shut down its all operation and just leave the 
combinative market. So this is a exact situations through the graphical representation that if we talk about if the price is more than the optimum level, so that means it continues the output at a profit. If it is less than the price is less than the average variable cost, then of course continue to produce the uh, product or output in the short run. But if it is below prices below the average uh, cost which has been shown in the line that means the firm has to shut, shut down its all operation. So this is also another way to show the conditions of, of shutdown or exist exit permanently through the graphical representation as well where the quantity has been measured on the x-axis and the cost has been measured on the y-axis. So when we talk about a firm with profits, the marginal cost will be upward sloping. In other words, we could say a firm supply curve in the short run. So when we talk about the ATC, so once the marginal cost curve or supply curve has been drawn, uh, the firm uh, the lender can easily draw to the average total cost curve or average cost curve, which is the inverse U shape. As this is the price line has been shown where the marginal cost touches the price line that would be the optimum level and if you look at the diagram then the marginal cost will cut the minimum point of the average total cost as well. Where P is equal to AR is equal to MR. So now which is in profit maximizing, maximizing quantity and where the where the uh, average and we talk about the optimum level which also touches the average cost it means as the output above this level the output increases the more and more profits could be uh, earned by the firm so this is a gap of the profit maximization a rectangular portion if you look at the rectangular portion, this is called the profit maximization portion, which is below, which is below the average total cost curve. And if it is above the average total cost curve, that means it would be a portion of a loss. That means still the firm can able to produce the or uh, you can see output in the market at some situations. So it is a portion of where the P, uh, you can say rectangular, let's name them A, B, C, D, the portion of the rectangular portion that's called the profit maximization portion, which has been done A, B, C, D based on assumption about the name. So this is called the firm with profits. So this is already shown in the profit. Let's talk about the losses of firm with losses. This is a marginal cost has been drawn. This is the average total cost which cuts the minimum point of uh, you can say and marginal cost cuts the minimum point of the average cost. Then this is the price line that Obviously, this is the loss which I have been told. So, this is a loss if you look up the loss. So, if it is above, uh, you can see if the price, if the price is less than the average total cost, that means it, got, it turned into a losses. The firm will not be able to produce the as much as quantity to earn the profit and it turned into a losses while after producing the output. So as a result, if the price is less than the total cost or average, sorry, average cost, it means it turned, uh, the, the rectangular portion will turn into a loss. Let's name A, B, C, D. So, and the uh, or, or loss maximizing quantity will be which has been shown. It's not at the minimum level. If it below the optimum level, it's turned into a profits. 
so if the price line would above the atc curve it become profit if the price line if above the atc curve it become or it turn into a losses so where the marginal cost cut the set or cuts the price line it's called the loss minimizing quantity this is a graphical representation where a firm uh, case will turn with uh, you can say losses long run so when we talk about the long run the firm market supply would always exist an entry and the firm can able to enter or exit the market until the profit turns into a zero so the firm in, in the long run the firm will enter or exit the market until the profit is driven to zero in the long run uh, the price is equal to the minimum level of the average total cost that means price is equal to the average total cost at a minimum level the long run market supply curve is horizontal at this price so when we talk about in the long run the curve of the long run supply curve will is a horizontal in shape so this is the exit scenario when the firms would willing to enter and exit the market until the profit turns into a zero here the second condition is price is equal to the average total cost market the shape of the market supply curve in the long run horizontal at the at the particular price competitive firms and zero profits so these are the three main points where you can elaborate in detail or with the help of the examples as well the profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost it means the profit is equal to tr minus tc where the total cost includes all the opportunity cost of the firm what is the opportunity cost opportunity cost are those expected returns that the firm you can say willing to get by sacrificing the best uh, next alternative uh, which have a shortage of resources in that's also include these cost that is expected returns will also include into the total cost of the firm but when we talk about the zero profit equilibrium where the profit is zero that means the firm revenue should compensate the owners for the time and money so that they can keep going on to expand their business or output and that's called the competitive firms in zero profit so when the firm has zero profits automatically firm has to compensate the owners about their time about their money so that they can they can able to expand their business to expand their output and it keeps on running so that's called the competitive firms and zero profit so let's come to the next concept is monopoly so monopoly is a price maker and they have a control they have a substantial control over the price competitive market condition is price is equal to marginal cost monopoly the price is greater than the marginal cost it means the monopolistic profit is not unlimited because of the demand curve so when we talk about the price which is equal to demand which is equal to ar mr or mc and or tc so it means the monopolistic profit is not unlimited because of the demand curve because the demand curve is a downward sloping curve and that's the main reason it's not unlimited why monopolies arise it's due to the barriers to entry at monopoly uh, there is block plenty of restrictions and the new firms can not be able to come and that's why monopolies arise uh, in such way monopoly resources is of course a key resource which is already used for the production owned by the one firm let's call diamonds golds in fact uh, the expensive stones i could say which covers the whole one markets uh, or one firm that's called monopoly 
government regulation the government gives a single form the right to produce some goods and service let's talk about railways so railways is is one of the segment of the government where it gives a single firm gives the ownership to a single firm okay this firm will 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 have will will the only to produce some goods or services for example railways the production process economies of scales why because because the cost are much lower in one firm over the others so if if we need to compare the firms from one firm to another so under monopoly the the price will become a lower as compared to the other firm so this is the conceptual framework of the monopoly or the concept of the monopoly about the conditions about the situations by the monopoly uh, you can see could arise so this is called the economies of scale as a cause of monopoly where the average total cost where the average total cost goes on declining why the average total cost is declining in case of monopoly due to the economies of scale or due to the law of diminishing marginal utility where it increase it declining uh, you can say from at an increasing rate and frequently it decline uh, declining uh, at a decreasing rate why why this shape in another word it is called a rectangular hyperbola so that's the main reasons the economies of scale could exist in the average total cost so if there's an issues exist the economies of scale could easily enter due to the uh, you can say accurate market efficiency accurate or effective coordination and cooperation a large market size a smooth environment so if there is an issues that the output is goes declining the economies of scale could uh, come into its place to increase the output by having or uh, you can say price uh, by having to increase the price or to increase the revenue as the output increases monopoly productions and pricing decisions so when we talk about the uh, production and pricing decisions under monopoly perfect competition so monopoly is always a sing, sole uh, producer and when we talk about monopoly the demand curve is always be a downward sloping demand curve it, it is a price maker and of course it could reduce the prices to increase the demand so he is a sole Maker, so accordingly, he could uh, increase the de demand by using uh, one or two alternatives, like whether it would reduce the price or increase the price to the expensive products. So that's all about monopoly when it comes to the production or pricing taking up the seasons. When we talk about the perfect competition, is many producers. So automatically, the demand curve under perfect competition is horizontal. So obviously, it is a price taker as it not a has no control over the price because the industry has to set up the price and it and has to sell as much as possible at the same price only. It could not be able to increase or decrease the price, but monopoly could do that. So when we talk about the decisions related to pricing and production, these are the two para two uh, scenarios of monopoly perfect competition. Then production and pricing decision could exist according to the price set up. By the industry in case of perfect competition, but when we case when uh, in case of monopoly, the and accordingly as it is a sole maker or owner, so it reduces the prices according to the demand and sales of a particular product, and that's called in case of monopoly and perfect competition. So these are the demand curves or the monopoly perfectly competitive market and monopoly market. So if you look at the, look at the a perfectly competitive market has been shown under part A and the monopoly market shown in the part B. 
So this is a demand curve of the perfectly complete market, which is a horizontal in shape. And this is a monopolistic demand curve, which is in demand, which is under a monopoly or monopolistic demand curve, a single monopolistic demand curve. So this is a graphical representation. If we, as the demand would remain the same, the output could increase or decrease according to the situation. But when we talk about the monopolistic, then the demand could decrease to increase the sale of a particular product uh, being by a single monopolistic. So that is the uh, graphical representations of the demand curves are perfect in monopolies monopoly market. So let's talk about how the revenue is to be earned under monopoly case. So the quantity has been given zero, zero uh, liters to eight liter. The price has been given from eleven rupees to three rupees. The total revenue is the same formula to calculate the price into uh, quantity. The average revenue is also calculated total revenue and uh, quantity and the marginal revenue is delta uh, TR by delta Q. These stands for delta. So the price and quantity has been given. The total revenue will easily be calculated. The marginal revenue once you get the total revenue, you can easily calculate the marginal revenue just by dividing the quantity to total revenue. Marginal revenue is delta TR. So what would be the chain 10 minus 0, 10 by uh, quantity it's 1. Change of 1 that is 10 by 1 is 10. 8, uh, you can say 18 minus 10. That means 8, 8 by 1, 8. 24 minus 18, that is 6. 6 by 1, 6. 28 minus 24, 4 by 1, 4. And 2, and so on, uh, you can see values that is 0, minus 2, minus 4. If you look at the shape of the marginal revenue, it goes, it increases, it increases at initially and begin at the declining, uh, you can see frequently it reaches to 0 and become negative. But when we talk about the marginal revenue, it always is declining at a decreasing rate. But when we talk about the total revenue, it begins from the origin and then it keeps on increasing at an increasing rate and reaches to a maximum level and then start falling at a decreasing rate. As you can see, 0, 10, 18, 24, 20, it decreases initially at an increasing rate and it becomes a maximum or become constant that is 30, 30 and then increase, uh, declining at a dec decreasing rate and that's called total revenue and marginal revenue is frequently decreases at a decreasing rate and marginal revenue is of course uh, increase initially begin from increasing level and then and then later on dec uh, uh, declining at a decreasing rate and reach to zero and then become negative. So this is the shapes of the revenue curves under monopoly case. If you look at the, this, but which curve is the demand, that is average revenue. If you look at the shape, this is an average revenue or you can use the diagram uh, using the tabular representation values, it always shows a declining. Then we talk about the marginal revenue curve which begins from 10 and continuously declining and reaches to 0 and then becomes negative. So this is a shape of marginal revenue. But the next concept is profit maximization. So if you want to draw the total revenue curve, you can easily draw using the uh, values which has been given in the presentation. But we have to show the demand curve and the marginal revenue. So this is the uh, average revenue and marginal revenue curves uh, which has been shown in the diagram. Profit maximization. So when you talk about the profit maximization case in the monopoly, it maximizes profit 
as much as the firm could produce the quantity where the master learning equals to marginal cost. And demand curve is equal to average revenue to find out the price which induced consumers to buy that particular levels of quantities. And that's called the profit maximization case where the marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. So this is the profit maximum where the average total cost, marginal total stock gets the minimum point and this is called the marginal revenue curve. So when the marginal revenue curve of the marginal, co marginal cost at point A, that means this point is called the profit maximizing quantity where the marginal revenue cuts the marginal cost. And this point, it's an interaction which a max profit maximization con con uh, quantity. And this is the demand curve, which is the average revenue curve. And the point where this curve is quantity maximum point and the price which is set up based on the maximum quantity, that price is called the monopoly price, which has been shown and it has been uh, design, uh, decided by the single monopolist. So when we talk about point B, it's a demand curve shows that the price is consistent with this quantity only. So whatever the or maximizing quantity, it becomes the consistent in the demand of course and ultimately decide equals to the monopoly price. The monopoly profit price is equals to total revenue and total cost, which is already given. The profit is also will classify the term. And of course, the profit is also equal to the price minus average total cost in the quantity. So whichever the situation, the profit comes under all terms being profit under the monopoly case. So this is an average monopoly profit, average total cost, this is a marginal cost, this is a marginal revenue, this is the average total cost, which touches, so this is a demand curve, this is a maximum quantity and the monopolist. So this is the portion of the profit that is EB. DC. So this is a portion of the profit which has been shown as a monopoly profit, which is uh, above the average total cost curve. So any any gap above the average total cost curve that stands for profit, and if the uh, marginal if the demand curve drawn just right of the marginal revenue, then it turns into a losses. So as the demand curve drawn uh, the right side of the marginal revenue curve, it turns into a profits, which is shown in the profit zone. You, you, you can look on the screen, it's monopoly profit. But when the demand returns, it uh, shifts to a rightward, leftward to the marginal revenue, it turns into a losses. So this is the scenario of the monopoly profit. The inefficiency of the pro inefficiency of monopoly, this is a demand curve, this is a marginal revenue, this is a marginal cost curve, this is an efficient quantity where the demand and marginal intersect each other. This is a monopoly or monopoly quantity as I already told at any above the level that becomes the losses. So this is a dead weight loss. That any portion is below that particular point, it becomes the loss. So that is called the marginal revenue and demand or inefficiency stands for the loss. The monopoly case, the monopoly in case of the loss, or in other words, the monopoly situation in case of the losses, which is called the dead weight loss. That's this loss will not be recovered after a certain period of time as well. So this is the uh, same shapes has been drawn. The portion is where the MC and the demand curve intersect each other and below the portion of that quantity that is the deadweight loss and where the 
marginal revenue cuts the marginal point that point is called the monopoly quantity with respect to the monopoly price and the gap a triangular triangular gap of the uh, you can say portion of interaction between the marginal revenue and marginal cost above the optimum uh, below the optimum or efficient quantity that triangular gap is called the dead weight loss. Next is inefficiency of monopoly. The monopolistic produces less than a solution. If it is if if the firm produces the uh, quantity or output less than the optimum level, it turns into a losses. Price discrimination is a is a is a practice of selling the same good at different prices to different consumers. Even the cost for producing two customers are the same. Even the cost are same for uh, for the products and two customers. If if a firm is charging different prices to different customers, that's called the price discrimination, where the prices is discriminated to. Uh, by a firm charging different prices to different customers. So this is called a discrimination policy. Examples of price discrimination is the movie ticket, store brands, and prices, discount coupons, and quantity discount. So if you want uh, discrimination in the prices in the above scenarios, in the above example, the price discrimination is, exists in these particular example. Movie tickets uh, get one uh, free. Store brands give line prices. If you have a different competitors, the one you can see in the Air India, uh, you can see uh, price ticket would be different to the another price jet airways. So this is called the uh, price discrimination. And of course, the under this industry, the industry, the price is being charged differently to different consumers. Same for store brands, movie ticket. If you if you see store brands online, the uh, same product prices differently charged to different consumers, different apps. So this is for store brands. One of the keys of the price discrimination: discount coupons on one app. The discount coupon rate is different on the second app. The discount coupon rate is different. So this is charging a different uh, discount coupons or providing a discount coupons to different consumers differently. Between monopolistic and perfect competition. So when we talk about these are the two perf uh, perfectly competitive is a case of pure market but when we talk about uh, types of imperfectly competitive market there are two categories oligopoly and monopolistic so when we talk about oligopoly few sellers offer similar and uh, differentiated products to the others customers monopolistic many firms selling products which are very similar but not identical Monopolistic competition, the competitive firm is inefficient. Average total cost, it's not at minimum level. Even a plenty of information, the consumer to collect and process to reach out the best decisions. Advertising cost in such case will also increase to increase the demand as it is essential in how you differentiate your product when compared to the other competitors or rival firms. Markets with only few seller, few sellers, independent firms, best of cooperating, acting like a monopolistic while producing a small quantity of output and charge prices accordingly, which is above the marginal cost. So this is a demand schedule where the quantity price has been shown in total revenue, which is equal to total profit has been uh, represented through this particular uh, demand schedule. Duopoly, that is obviously where we are talking about the price and quantity supplied, where the marginal cost equals to price. And of course, where the marginal cost, uh, you can say price and the quantity in such market, where the total profit could be maximized. <laughs>